A roast as dark as the night, perfect for fueling the cryptid research and mad ravings required for your podcasting. Don't mind the red eyes, he's just trying to warn you of the bridge. The bridge. Finally, from the caffeine-addled brains of spring Jack Coffee and last podcast on the left, we bring you Mothman's Red Eye Blend. Yes, delicious Panama beans. Go to lastpodcastmerch.com to order yours today. <laughs> There's no place to escape to. This is the last podcast. On the left. <laughs> from your That's when the cannibalism started. You find though, then you always find out there's always someone. I mean, like, I think that I am the most charming, funniest guy in the world. And there's some people that just, I don't know what it is. They just dislike me. Yeah. Just upon introduction. Yeah. And, and I don't know why that is. I don't know why maybe to, to some, you know, because jealousy, obviously. Oh, yeah, they're one. so obviously. jealous. It's the jealousy. Especially when they don't know your profession or anything mm-hmm. about you. They're just intrinsically <laughs> jealous. Just the look at that guy. Your, You're like, of your je- presence. It's, it's vibe. You know, jealous of his vibe. It's, it's, you know, it's, an, it's an enviable oh, vibe. They must be jealous of my show. Shows that I've done on television, or no, 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 oh, I, no, I don't know anything about you. But it's why there's so many people come up to me and they're all like, "What's your fucking deal?" Right? They say that to me, and I'm like, yeah. "I'm glad that you asked." And I'm like, I was like oh, so natural magnetism, of course." Beth, maybe it's because I'm not a harbinger of doom. My maybe being. it is. Welcome to the last podcast on the left, everyone. Ben hanging out with Marcus and the ever charming F. <laughs> Effervescent? I was going to say effervescent. I take that. Henry Zabrowski. Acquired taste. Acquired yeah. taste, Henry Zabrowski. Remember it's good those, to be back. Remember those air quotes candies that were called warheads? Yeah. You're kind of like that. At first, you're like, bleh, bleh. Yeah. but over time, you get used to it. That's yeah, me. And then you're addicted. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, man. I had a jar of those fucking things. And they, I don't know why I chose to suffer. We yeah. all were like this when we were kids. I don't know why. We all liked whatever was the sourest thing. Mm-hmm. That's what I was into. I know. Yeah, me too. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Well, today's episode, we yeah. are... You I'm know already what? mad that we even started not even talking about the fact that Mothman knew about yeah. goddamn 9-11 and did <laughs> fucking nothing. Well, Mothman... Did absolutely we nothing. We don't mm. know Mothman's political leanings. <laughs> also, oh, do you think Mo- he's with the Saudis? Well, does he like... Does <laughs> does Mothman like buildings or does he, like, you know, is he... If he truly is Moth-like, he would probably fly into them all the time and bonk his head. <laughs> he would have loved the World Trade Center. Maybe it was the fireball that attracted him. <laughs> Could be. Building 7. So today's episode, a little palate cleanser from all the very serious things we've been talking this about. Is or fucking, is it? This is fucking serious. I have two drinks in either hand. We're here. <laughs> also, we're going to remind you about the Mothman Coffee Blend. Very good. We did that. That's a fucking promo at the very top. This is serious as hell. All right. We're on to Mothman Redux Part 1 of a 30 series. <laughs> So not- I just tried to add a third this morning. I tried to add <laughs> really, a third, and you, you really no, did. So. You, yeah, he, he was like, with it. He's like, did you know that Mothman might have been involved with 9/11? Did you know that I found a book about this? And did you know? We might have enough for a third episode. And or I said, could it did be? you know? <laughs> He's not, we're not going to have a his third episode. His eyes rolled back in his head <laughs> yeah. in a way and then shot down of his body and came out of his ass. Did you know Mothman was there when they were building the Egyptian pyramids? Or could it be Mothman himself was, I don't know, a pyramid? He's just trying to warn you of everything and doing nothing. I could literally for like he's I'll the fight. king of the virtual signal. He's the virtue signaler of all of cryptids. For oh, the yeah. se- I know we're just going to hop right into it here in a second. Yeah. <laughs> but for the second to the last year that we do this show, can we just do an entire year on cryptids? Yes. Yeah. I am just so in. I'm just I love anything that isn't about any human. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of those episodes are going to be about, you know, 12 minutes long. Yeah. Great. Well, the, <laughs> it's going to be the cryptid year, and then we begin. That's how you know the show is ending when we start our Illuminati series and mm-hmm. we go on and on, and we and chase and the on. listener away. Mothman <laughs> Redux Part 1. So in 1966, two couples in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, reported to the local sheriff that during a joyride at the TNT plant outside of town, they encountered a bizarre creature beyond anything they'd ever seen. Also, that's how boring life used to be. You used to just go on a joyride. To nowhere. I, I still kind of do. Yeah, I I love riding around. 
Well, that's because you got to see Jay Leno next to a car that was on fire with his hands in his pockets. <laughs> Welcome to all, LA. All I did. sad and, uh, and angry on the side of the highway. I did. His car was not on fire, but he was bloated and sad and wearing a Canadian tuxedo. He that's was, all he wears. He was doing what he loves best. Yeah, standing for- next to a car on fire. <laughs> that's what He's he likes. Just like us. Yeah. No, man, growing up in a small town, I, I rode around constantly. That was all we did. Okay. We did the drag. We did, had that nice tea. You got to turn around <laughs> at the hill. You turn around mm-hmm. over the Pimmons house, you turn around at the Molno's house, you turn wow. around over the Atkinson house, it's and then you do it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I'm do sure it again I, and again. You do it for about three hours. I'm sure the Molno's house was very happy with oh, it. Oh, very much so. <laughs> well, by their reports, the creature was shaped like a seven-foot-tall man sporting massive wings on his back. But what terrified these two couples the most were the creature's saucer-like blazing red eyes. Beware the red eyes. That creature, of course, was the cryptid that sits at, and I might get some pushback from this. Okay. I'm going to put this cryptid at number four Whoa. on the most famous Fuck cryptid you. list. Fuck that. I mean, I don't think that that's inappropriate. Well, look, here's his list. Bigfoot. Yes. yes. Loch Ness Monster. Yes. This is the controversial one. Chupacabra. See, that's bias. <laughs> no, I... That's bias because he's a Chupacabra. No, he's a Chupacabra <laughs> fan. He's seen a few Chupacabra or starving dogs in Texas. Yes. But I actually think that that might be true. I yeah. think that Mothman is number three. I think that Mothman is one of those bands that's like really big within the cryptic community. Yeah. But amongst the people at large, the population at large, Mothman is not big. I, right. Mothman Ooh, is I Mothman think... is the sonic youth of cryptids. Hey, so I'm saying, I would say more like Husker Du. Husker Du? Oh, no, 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 no. I would say the Flatwoods Monster is more the Husker Du. That's, Fuck that's... you. <laughs> We got Husker Do's, we got Husker Don'ts. The Hodag, that's Husker Do. Actually, that's some Wisconsin. people say the Flatwood Monster is just the Mothman in another form. <laughs> well, the creature that sits at number four okay. on our cryptid countdown is the Mothman. Ah! Now, we skimmed the Mothman story when we did our Men in Black series a few years back. But the Mothman story and the story of Mothman in general are not exclusively linked to the MIBs. No, they are, the MIBs are a side effect of the Mothman. We discovered, and we got into the topic of Men in Black because we were really scared by it and interested in it, but the Mothman story as a whole, once we got into the actual research behind it, because I've read the Mothman prophecies obviously many times by John Keel, and you get kind of the overall story about this cryptid, and you don't really, kind of, you know, at the time, we're like, oh, well, the Mothman's like a simple story. The, yeah. the, mm-hmm. the Men in Black is like a cool, complex story, but now you kind of look at it, there's actually many aspects of the Mothman story, and it's actually co- kind of complicated, And oftentimes, quite controversial. Yeah. Okay. Well, the reason why Mothman is so closely linked to the Men in Black is because the Mothman is the most famous case involving the Men in Black. This is not least because of the massive and deadly bridge collapse that happened during the Great Mothman Flap of the mid-60s. But we'll get to the Silver Bridge in Episode 2. Okay. For this series, we're going to be focusing mostly on the Mothman itself, although we will take some side quests into the mysterious goings-on that occurred around the Mothman story. Specifically, in Episode 2, we're going to explore the enigmatic character known as Indrid Cold. And also, oh, yeah. what did Mothman know or not know about 9-11 and why was he there and do nothing? Why did yeah. he do nothing? Even though, because we know for a fact that the men in black were actually just MK Ultra trained former German Nazi scientists that were there that were used to be a smoke screen because they were acting super weird wow. in order to cover the fact that the Nazi UFO program had been moved since the end of World War II to the TNT area of West Virginia. Buddy, fast forward 1.30 in the morning at a bar and you just made yourself a point. <laughs> Or could it be that the Mothman is like the Watchmen and that they mm. witness but are not allowed to interfere? With Dr. Manhattan. Well, what's the point? These men, like, well, these Manhattan, humans. What's Dr. The Manhattan chose to not interfere. All what's I remember is that These scene? men, their, their schedule. What is he, this thing, I, uh, how they choose for me to be amongst them? Yeah, or? their schedules is that for, for me, the goings-on of man is no more significant than the goings-on of an atom or a neutron. So Whoa. why should I care? Of Whoa. the goings on of man. Wow, Whoa. what a shock. Whoa, man, that's cool. <laughs> what is, it? is that, is that uh, Zaslav? Wow, that's really Wonder powerful. Man? Wow. Now, of course, the man who brought the Mothman story to the world was paranormal legend John Keel, whose 1976 book, The Bra- Mothman Prophecies, Bra- my boy. was turned. It was turned into a better than you'd expect no. Richard Gere movie no. in 2002. Than... Incorrect. No, I just actually... watched it last night. Yep. Well, I watched it in the well about ten years ago. And it was fun, uh, and I watched it like a year and a half ago, and I really liked it. Twelve hours ago. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what it is? It's because you're bringing you're bringing a level of intensity to the film. Expectation. Expectation. This is a Richard Gere <laughs> vehicle about the Mothman. Relax. You're putting me in a corner. Never put Henry in a corner. <laughs> but uh, John Keel, what I like about it is that they split John Keel into two people. Yeah. So it's the John, I think his name is like Kreef or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there's the scientist lady or the cop lady, L Laura Linney, who's named oh, like uh, like something Leak, which is Keel backwards or right. some garbage. But what it is, it's Richard Gere trying to talk like John Keel mm -hmm. that you will see is not how number one how not how John Keel talks. Yeah, because yeah. no one else, no one knows how John Keel talks. You're gonna Again, see. We're gonna show you a clip today. Okay. But but Richard Gere's going, and now you you know, I come down here, I'm looking at this moth man. He's doing this like, weird New York <laughs> accent the whole time because yeah. John Keel's from the Upper West Side. It's vaguely distracting, but the movie itself is still the devices they use in the movie are still fun. Like when he shows up at the house and it's like You've you been, been here. here. You've been here. You've been here three times now. Yeah, that like, is a good thing. Oh, the whole time I was like, that's not Mothman. That's not the Mothman story <laughs> I know. <sighs> how do the you Mothman. please how do you please the audience? I don't know. I Suck, do, I, dick. I don't know. Suck the okay. audience's dick. <laughs> All right. John Keel, however, was not pleased with the fact that he was known until the day he died as the Mothman guy. Well, John well, Keel felt that his massive body of work was a far too, how do you put it? It was put into a little Mothman box. Yeah. And like, while we are showing that the Mothman box is actually much bigger than we originally thought it was, John Keel had a whole life of writing right. about these Fordian topics. He was an incredible investigator, died a bachelor, which is a real paranormal investigator. I, I don't right. disagree with that. No time for love. No time for a <laughs> single kiss. I yeah. don't think he's ever, I don't think he's ever been hugged. No. Because he basically lived a life rolling in the same aspects of Charles Fort that was like kind of his predecessor who put together all of these stories of the weird. We'll he get felt, to him here in a second. But he yeah. felt that they should have been cataloged. And John Keel believed in that idea and then moved forward with it. And then he was kind of doing it in an empirical way, like believing this concept of like, we're looking for hard evidence of the weird. Mm -hmm. And him right. and Jacques Vallée both sort of like figured out, oh, what if we just like understand that it is a psychic and physical scenario. And that's going to be the, the they are the kind of the birth of this concept of ultra terrestrials, mm -hmm. that everything, sure. that the, everything we see with cryptids, UFOs, ghosts, aliens, they're all the same kind of phenomena, the capital P phenomena, and that they are all like different, you know, they're there to teach us some kind of lesson. And we don't know what that is. Well, I wonder why they had a hard time fitting in. <laughs> You know, this was such a nice, totally A to B. You know, I get it. You know, it's the same. It reminds me of Bill Clinton. Everyone focuses on the blowjobs, but they forget about how many black people are incarcerated. You know, let's, let's, think, let's see the whole picture. Well, let's break down that Keel belief system. Break down. Now, John Keel can be counted amongst those paranormal researchers who follow the theoretical models of Charles Fort, who maintain that all unexplained phenomena actually did have some sort of rational explanation. Fortians, as Charles Fort's followers are called, see themselves as ultimately skeptics. Skeptics, but skeptics, cool skeptics. Yeah. Cool skeptics, not just asshole skeptics. No, no not Mick West. No, okay. no, no John Nichols. Okay. They welcome simple explanations for paranormal phenomena, like when someone confuses a meteor for a UFO, or when a dead chupacabra proves itself to be a mange-ridden dog. Yeah. It is important to note, however, that Fortians do not employ the term paranormal. Yeah, asshole. <laughs> what, what did I do? I don't know. I'm sorry. I just yeah. I, I struck out at you. Yeah, yeah. Paranormal, <laughs> of course, has negative connotations. It, it implies yeah. that there's something unreal about all this, something unexplainable. Mm -hmm. Instead, they prefer to classify such phenomena as ghosts, UFOs, and cryptids as the Fortian milieu. Yeah. Why don't we just call it paranormal? <laughs> the Fortian milieu sounds like something you do after an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> No, I. No, they are because <laughs> I understand the idea is to set. They, they are these guys were the first on the forefront of like maybe that one day humankind will have a new science that will explain all of these things that includes psychic aspects. Forty. That's where John Keel jumped from the Fortian ideas. Yeah. yeah for example, the Ghostbusters would be yeah. considered Fortian. Yes, Dan Aykroyd by yeah. far. Well, you know, in absolutely. real life the, as well, right? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. 
But that being said, when it comes to entities in the Fortean milieu, like poltergeists and Bigfoots, Bigfoots, Fortians believe that if something unexplained is not a hoax or a misidentification, that there is still a rational explanation for the phenomena. Just like I love it. A, yeah, just like there's a rational explanation for, say, like let's just use the aurora borealis. Yeah, as we an all know that's angel farts. <laughs> we all know that. All right, it's stupid. It's a dumb phenomena, yeah. and honestly, I think it should be wiped out. <laughs> Might be. What if it's God's meth? Yeah, just leaves yeah, it on the it's table. Fucking bong, dude. <laughs> it's, God, it's him up there thinking about the fucking platypus, dude. <laughs> I mean, seriously, how did God think of the platypus? Well, the he way- didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the way Fordians figure it, the aurora borealis was something that you could see, but for thousands upon thousands of years, people could not explain what the aurora borealis was or why it did what it did. Now. Now we can absolutely explain right. what it is and why it does what it does. I mean, I can't. No, I don't but know. But like I, science can. I also some, don't care. <laughs> it has, I think it has something to do with the magnetic fields of the Earth. Oh, wow. Sure. I think. I thought yeah. it's got to do. I thought, is cosmic dust real? Uh, sure, why not? Also, <laughs> did you know that waves are just caused by dolphins farting? That's my bit. He is literally, there, I just said that Oreo oh, Bros. was angels fart. You no, just said the thing. Oh, no, That's I just said bit. farting. Did yeah, you know, I, okay, fine, I'll redo it. Did you know that waves are just caused by sharks uh, yawning? (laughs) (laughs) I I just I I didn't steal your bit. Are you sure he's not the one made by a machine? I am in a lab. (laughs) I I, I was the scientist that made Henry in a lab. I'd love to see that beaker. (laughs) (laughs) Well, to prove that this line of thinking is sound, Lauren Coleman, author of Mothman and Other Curious Encounters, he cites the oft-repeated example given by cryptozoologists when anyone tells them that cryptozoology doesn't even belong in the same building as so-called respectable zoology. Everybody's immediately offended. Yeah, just, <laughs> it, there's room for everyone. I think it's the fact that crypto is in the name. Yeah, crypto that makes is, me, everybody upset. Everyone yeah. hates when crypto is attached to anything. It makes you feel weird. I like it, though. Yeah. See, back in the mid-1800s, rumors were abound in Europe of a gigantic, black-furred, hollow-eyed, man-killing monster deep within the jungles of Africa that was strong enough to beat an elephant to death. Whoa. Now, the elephant beating was an exaggeration. Mm. I looked it up. This animal cannot beat an elephant to death. It would lose in a fight against an elephant. I'd love to see it, though. But this creature does indeed exist. In 1847... A large humanoid skull was found by an explorer named Paul de Chalut. And by 1850, a living specimen of this creature was found, and they identified it, and they named it the gorilla. You see? Whoa. And you see now? Oh, but, interesting. Um, so the gorilla was a cryptid yeah. in the 1800s. The this gorilla's is, absolutely a cryptid. Well, that's I, very interesting. I am going to, though, just say. Okay, mm-hmm. for all you cryptos, are you going to say gorillas there. aren't real? No, no, they are <laughs> okay. real. I'm okay. just saying Good. that, like, they use these examples all the time. Okay? Yeah, they do. They really. And love the thing these is examples. that, what I do, though, I do understand. But the thing about a gorilla is that we we had other monkeys. <laughs> and we had seen other <laughs> no, monkeys. But not so you the can gorilla. extrapolate. Yeah. But you can extrapolate a creature like this kind of thing. It's not a monkey. It's an ape. But I'm just fucking <laughs> saying that when you say stuff like a Mothman, <laughs> right? We yeah. haven't seen one yet. Really. You've seen we moths. haven't seen other examples of it. We haven't seen a Chihuahua man. We haven't seen well, anything. We haven't seen a build up to a moth man. I haven't truly haven't even seen a bird with big enough legs that I would I consider cl- closely man like. What an ostrich. Yeah, an ostrich. That's a, that's what, about fl- legs. what about a flamingo? Yeah. I think that you, you know also, what I'm saying? It's just cryptozoologists are all going, like, but in fact, it did exist. Like, they just I, love this. They, it's, like, they, it's not the only example, though. It's oh, not the only example. Well, this is just a little life tidbit from Ben Kissel. If there's a neighbor in your house or in your neighborhood that puts flamingos out only one time sporadically throughout the year, that means they're having a swingers party, and that's to locate the swingers party. It's the flamingos. That's true with some monks swingers. Wow. <laughs> I'm just glad your research from the show. It really does. It, 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 it yeah. makes content. It does. Yeah. And on it went like this from the gorilla. This happened over the next century. It happened with goofy little creatures like the pygmy hippopotamus. But we had big hippopotamus. Ah, we had big hi- Ah, but did we have anything close to the platypus? A duck. No. 
<laughs> no, we didn't. I know. I'm just saying it's just, a, it, you know, yeah. All right. This proves that Mothman could exist. Yeah. We just don't know where he is. Yeah. I know. This is it's just the thing about that. How, we'll how get did you it. appreciate uh, this? Uh, but what of the fearsome creatures? How do you get these nerds to be happy, I Marcus? Know. You can't. Okay. Suck the nerds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what of the Komodo dragon, Dang. which is considered to be a myth? I know. What of the great Kraken. <laughs> there you go. It's that just was, a big ass fucking squid. The giant squid, my I, friend. I agree. I'm just saying they're all, it's the look of the victory in the face <laughs> of a cryptozoologist that I can't handle. Well, it's their satisfaction. Yeah. They should be satisfied. The well, point is, most cryptozoologists believe themselves to be a legitimate arm of zoology, even if zoologists do not extend their hand in friendship in kind. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> fighting because it, well, you know, yeah, well, like, well, because it derails their entire like true science of zoology but yeah. zoologists also like i think they're just fucking jealous they might that be someone's coming in on their money they're you trying know? to fuck with you know how much money's in zoology <laughs> <laughs> you know what lauren coleman calls it cultural elitism yeah <laughs> and that very well may be the case when you consider the sheer number of sightings that occurred during the west virginia mothman flap of the 1960s now, you may say that using a gorilla in this comparison is a false equivalency because those animals were hidden deep in the wilds of Africa, far from any sort of city or town or anything. And we already had other monkeys. We had other monkeys. We, we had examples of other we, monkeys. You made your point, Henry. I'm just saying in terms of You made your point. <laughs> They're apes. But when it comes to the Mothman's environment, while it may not be as dangerous and inaccessible as the Congo, West Virginia is a healthy rival. I call that our Congo. <laughs> <laughs> no, West Virginia is one of America's forgotten states. So obscure that I'm willing to bet that most of you would have a hard time naming any city or town in West Virginia besides Point Pleasant. Ben, go. City in West Virginia. Pulled pork, West Virginia. <laughs> Springfield. I and, bet you there's a Springfield. I'm sure there's a yeah, Springfield. Yeah, that's just, yeah, that's, also, you'd be surprised how many states have a Dublin. There's a lot There's of states a lot with of a and double. Paris. There's yeah. many states with a Paris. Yeah. There's a Springfield, West Virginia. Yeah. Is there a pulled pork, West Virginia? <laughs> no applause. <laughs> yeah. How no many? Applause, but no. you know how many people are in Springfield, West Virginia? Four hundred twenty-one. It and counts. That, the, I mean, it does count. And the one that just died made it four twenty. <laughs> Whoa! Time to get stoned. <laughs> well, smack dab in the middle of Ohio, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and actual Virginia. West Virginia is a seldom visited, seldom spoken of state that is neither northern, southern, nor midwestern. Well, Jared Logan, our comedian friend, he talks yeah, about West Virginia in his stand-up set many times. And I remember the one time he told the story about his uh, grandmother who's like, we have the juice boxes. And she's like, and she used to call them squeezies. Yeah. She's like, you boys <laughs> get me this house. You want me to sell some squeezies? That's cute. It was cute. Oh, it was yeah. cute. That's his bit. Yeah. With a population that barely edges out Rhode Island, despite being 20 times larger in size, Dang. West Virginia is the only state that is completely within the Appalachia region, making it heavily forested. It is also, of course, heavily mined, which has greatly degraded its quality of life. Good, clean coal. <laughs> That's watching Joe Manchin, thank you for the coal. I was watching a thing where a guy was in a coal mine in town. That's just something else. That's where you people don't know. That they don't know if that coal mining goes. This whole town's going with it. Absolutely. Just Absolutely. Yeah, it's like, I, I know it's very hard, but I, I know, but we'll get something in there. Absolutely. Now, dense forests, abandoned coal mines, the seventh highest cancer rates in the country, Ooh. and the highest per capita opioid deaths by a disturbingly large margin. I mean, the nice thing is you just flip it and say, we're number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, number two is like 60 deaths per thousand, and West Virginia is 90 deaths per thousand. Jesus. Of course, that's because, you know, West Virginia was where Oxycontin was first tested on all the aforementioned miners because they suffer from many chronic uh, pain. Yeah, know, and know. the forgotten people, Appalachian. Yeah. The Appalachian forgotten people. Mm -hmm. They don't just make moonshine. Yeah. Well, this might be... Well, they, they do make a lot of moonshine. They do make they a do. lot of moonshine. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, this might be contributing factors as to why the population of West Virginia is so low. But perhaps it could also be that West Virginia seems to repel people on a subconscious level. Marcus... Or could it be? Or could it be? Yes. Yeah. Ex okay. Excuse me. Or could it be, perhaps, that West Virginia repels people on a subconscious level? Not like me. I don't I, know. I. It's a very bring conscious in. level. You, know, you, are, you repel people very consciously. <laughs> yes. It is a choice. West Virginia, you see, 
just like the Jersey Devil's home in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, is a weird place where weird shit happens. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And it's not just the Mothman. I got a fun little, like, it's from the same book. Just, like, just a couple just to understand what else people have been seeing at the time period during the Mothman. Uh, the the flap. Like, uh, the story of Kathy Reeves. This mm. was in 1966, around this, the same year that the Mothman sighting started. Um, she saw... Uh, three tiny tree stumps walking across a meadow near her home. Ta- walking trees. It's cute. Uh, that is that is the only real example of walking trees I found. Well, well now I showed some videos on the stream. But. The, 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 <laughs> these walking stumps were orange, blue, white, yellow, and watermelon color. Oh, they sound like smir- cool. they, this, they sound like Smurf houses. Wait, but do they not have the color green? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's I don't know. It's green. Maybe it's, it's our source. <laughs> uh, there was another co- local couple that saw a group of cyclops. They believe they saw a group of cyclops out in the woods talking at them. These people saw poltergeist activity. That may have just been Sarah Huckabee Sanders. (laughs) I'll be here all week. Got her! Folks, you'll see me on the Tonight Show tomorrow. He's going to be in Vegas. Again, you show up front row. If you have a a fucking sign that says, I'm Irish, Kissel's going (laughs) to nail you. Right? But no, it is an example of like this, a lot of weird shit happens all at once in a pan, like, paranormal activity yeah. area. So it's poltergeist right. activity, UFOs, cryptids, weird shit, and people will see them kind of all at once. Yeah. Cool. And of course, the other popular cryptid out of West Virginia, the, that's the Flatwoods Monster. Yes. That's in Braxton County. But mm-hmm. we're going to give the Flatwoods Monster its own episode in the future. Unless, again, it's Mothman in another form. Well, we'll cover that when we cover the Flatwoods yes. Monster. You're still trying to attach another episode to this. <laughs> I'm, that's all I'm trying to do. Live from your grave. But for our Mothman series, we're going to focus on where else but the Mothman's home, Point Pleasant, which has a grisly history all its own. Like most states that are anywhere near the East Coast, West Virginia saw its fair share of wars and battles with native tribes in the 18th century. And when it came to Point Pleasant, their most violent and consequential conflict was Lord Dunmore's War. Oh, Hmm. Lord Dunmore. Mm -hmm. You thought thought you were going to escape history. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> no, we got it again. I thought we were talking about the Mothman. We'll get there. But Lord it starts way Dunmore. back. Right before you remember anything you want to talk about it that's interesting. Yeah. You just got to wait a couple of hundred years <laughs> okay. before you get to it. It's really All important. Right. Well, fought mostly against the Shawnee and Mingo tribes between 1771 and 1774, Lord Dunmore's war was a fairly typical conflict for the time. As far as Lord Dunmore himself went, he was Scottish by birth and blood and wore a kilt more often than not. What, does that cool. mean? what, what do you mean Scottish by blood? Does he have diabetes? <laughs> no, no. Scottish by blood is, is more like, I think it's kidney failure. Oh, from yeah, the yeah. Scotch. But also, oh, yeah. there's something about the affectation of a man with a kilt. Yeah. That well, is well, like, I, in, I mean, in Scotland, him, it's it's great. It makes sense. Yeah. But in I would say yeah. in West Virginia, it's not going to make that. It's mosquitoes. Yeah. Oh, the mosquitoes yeah. get all up in there. Your perineum is going to be all dotted up. <laughs> full your, of bites. Your weirdly pasty knees, your, yeah. pop, your weird knobby legs, mm-hmm. just like all yeah, covered in bites and soot. Ugh. Lindsey Graham calls him his ladybugs. Yeah. Mm, boy, you just you're really into I, that. I'm not into it. I just think about it all the time. You really do. <laughs> See, it was Dunmore's belief that more settlements for the whites further west into tribal territory could not be gained through treaty or negotiation. Dunmore advocated instead for total war, which inevitably resulted in the murders of innocents. Oh, yes. See, even though Dunmore's main enemy were the Shawnee, a group of settlers methodically murdered a family belonging to a friendly tribe named the Mingo. In retaliation, a Mingo chief named Logan killed and scalped 30 settlers, and thereafter joined the Shawnee against Lord Dunmore. Dunmore therefore signed treaties with other tribes in order to wipe out the Mingo and Shawnee for good. The killing continued from there, but the bloodiest battle of Lord Dunmore's war was fought at where else but Point Pleasant. Interesting. In a bloody hand-to-hand battle that lasted for hours, the body count reached into the hundreds, and both sides reportedly took scalps from the dead. The battle resulted in yet another treaty and effectively ended Lord Dunmore's war. Well, it was the beginning of wigs for men who were balding. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) But... In 1777, after the American Revolution began, a Shawnee chief named Cornstalk, remembering Lord Dunmore's war, Uh favored neutrality 
between the Americans and the British. Another party within the Shawnees, however, favored siding with the British, naively hoping that the Brits would live up to promises of no more settlements that encroached on Shawnee territory. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, trust. yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely the guys that started the colonies in the first place. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah. oh, no, we're dumb. <laughs> Lord Dunmore. Now, the former grounds of the Battle of Point Pleasant had since become Fort Randall, and the commander, Matthew Arbuckle, decided to take any Shawnees he found as prisoners because they were leaning towards supporting the British. And you should have seen his army of cats. <laughs> John Arbuckle. John Arbuckle. Oh, yes. Garfield. That's Matthew I, Arbuckle. I guess that's his great, great, great grandfather. And then, but honestly, if he had those cats to be, I imagine they'd be very lazy. Yeah. Well, yes. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> Unless you, you give them the lasagna <laughs> after the war. I'm a true skeptic. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Chief Cornstalk, who again favored neutrality, he arrived at Fort Randall with his young son in the spirit of friendship yeah. to ask why his fellow Shawnees were being held. Cornstalk and his son were, of course, also imprisoned. Ugh. But it all came to a head when two militiamen were murdered by the Shawnee. In retaliation, the soldiers within Fort Randall decided to murder all of the Shawnees in their captivity, including Cornstalk and his young son. In the American tradition of overreacting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Overcorrection. Yes. It should be in our national anthem. Mm -hmm. And of course, as Cornstalk lay dying, he placed a curse on Point Pleasant and possibly all of West Virginia. Now, this wow. comes up quite a bit yeah. in all of the literature about the Mothman. The curse of Chief Cornstalk. Yes, this curse seems to be like it weighs heavily on the people of Point Pleasant and West Virginia in general. And I do want to say, like, yeah, we uh, we laugh a lot here. We, we have to to make it through this crazy fucking life. We do. But I do think that of all of the phenomena, of the cryptid phenomena, I think that Mothman is largely the most truly frightening. Yeah. And a part of it is about how serious people took this curse and how it comes up right. again and again and again. Well, and you make this point oftentimes, Henry. I mean, is a curse real? Is it not real? Well, it does seem to affect the people of West Virginia because yes. they don't have anything. Yeah. And I'm talking basketball baseball hockey they have their main thing is their west virginia college team and if you fucking lose a game there it's like losing as a soccer player in saudi arabia they'll kill you okay they have to they got nothing else you Absolute. have to win you have to win but there's something about the the phenomena then the, this trauma of the past we've talked about this now we now that we the way we've been covering cryptids is like kind of talking about like where do they come from where's the the thing that sets it off because i believe that it's half psychic I, i'm in the john keel school of mm -hmm. like you kind of create some of the aspect it's some fun i forget what the term the hellier crew the new kirks came up with which is it's an eager gore that it's like so it's a bunch of people Eagor. it's like it's a real term but it's, it's it's essentially it's a tulpa live mm. okay where did it come from where did it go where did it come from, from Cotton Eye Joe. Joe. And that's all he's, and that's what Which this is, is all about. also the fifth cryptid on <laughs> Marcus's list. <laughs> well, here's pretty much how Chief Cornstalk's curse went. He said that in the past, he had only warred on the people of Point Pleasant in defense and that he had refused to join their red coated enemies. Cornstalk had come to their fort as a friend and they had murdered him along with his young son. You betrayed me! They did. For this, he said, the curse of the great spirit would rest upon their land. May it be blighted by nature. May it be blighted of its hopes. Uh -huh. Checks There's out. May the strength of its peoples be paralyzed by the stain of Cornstalk's blood. Can't we just get a lacrosse team or, <laughs> or some <laughs> thing, just something to bump uh -huh. the tourism? Or and sure enough, for decades afterward, any misfortune in or around Point Pleasant was blamed on Chief Cornstalk's curse. As a side note, just to give the whole thing a new layer of grave defilement, cool. Cornstalk was originally buried at Fort Randall and his corpse was disinterred and moved, not once, but twice. Why? Uh, just because they wanted to. Yeah, they, they, they were trying they to find a new place for it. Nothing else to do. True. Well, well, they, they okay. wanted to put a new thing there, and they're like, well, we got this guy here, so let's uh, just take the guy and put him somewhere else. Okay. In addition, a monument commemorating the Battle of Point Pleasant was destroyed by lightning strike 
twice. It's weird. That is weird. <laughs> That's like weird. That's one of those where you're like, what are we asking? Really? For? Yeah. yeah. So the third time they just didn't like the second time. They was like, we're just going like, to rebuild it. We'll yeah, stop rebuilding. Yeah, it was, yeah. Nah. it's fine. Now, if the only large scale disaster that had ever happened in and around Point Pleasant was the infamous bridge collapse that we'll cover in episode two, then one could easily wave off this curse as just one more amongst no doubt thousands of curses placed upon this land by betrayed and murdered Native Americans. Oh, I thought you were going to say just horrible plans on infrastructure. But just in general, <laughs> just the curses that have just come out of this country. Yeah. Yeah. But when you look at just what this region of West Virginia has been through over the last 150 years, it very well may be that Chief Cornstalk's curse was one of the hexes that stuck. This will be the land of the fupa. <laughs> <laughs> the unrestrained fupa will spread oh. across this great, this horrible blood-soaked <laughs> land. Nothing wrong with a good old fupa. You gotta, you gotta keep, it, keep it warm down there. Oh, yeah. I like to play with the bags. <laughs> in 1907, the worst mining disaster in American history occurred in nearby Monaghan, West Virginia, when 362 miners died after the mine itself mysteriously exploded. They still to this day don't know why it exploded. Jeez. Maybe it's all the flammable stuff that <laughs> yeah. out of the goddamn okay. ground. Let me okay, maybe I should say they don't know exactly why it exploded. Probably hit upon a fucking yeah. pocket of gas or whatever and killed all of them. It sounds like it's rough to they be have, It sounds horrible. They have some pretty good guesses. Yeah. Then in 1944, a tornado killed 150 people just north of Point Pleasant. Whoa. That was fucking Lord Royale. <laughs> well, that's what he likes to claim. Yeah, that was because he didn't have his shoe size. He went to the Skechers store, <laughs> yeah. and they didn't have, you know, those those like, the round yeah, shoes? Oh, I remember. Yeah. They were supposed to be for exercise. Yeah, and they don't have size sixes for men's for him, and so he couldn't get them. <laughs> I have traveled back to 1944 <laughs> in order to put my curse upon the people of West Virginia. If you're still out there, Lord Royale, what's going on, bro? What's, going on? what's up, bro? <laughs> well, when it came to the air, an airplane crashed an hour away from Point Pleasant in 1968. That killed about 35 people. Yeah. And two years Damn. later, another airplane crashed an hour south when it flew into the side of a mountain. God. That killed 75. God. You just want to pull up. Pull up there. <laughs> and in addition to all that, 51 men died when construction scaffolding collapsed during the construction of a power plant just north of Point Pleasant. And Point Pleasant's entire water supply was once heavily contaminated when a train derailed outside of town and spilled thousands of gallons of toxic chemicals. To be honest with you, if I'm a politician, I'm blaming all this on Mothman. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because go I, right to Mothman. That was Mothman. Yeah. Nothing to do with the deals I've signed. With. It definitely sounds like massive, unrestrained like corruption within our infrastructure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? like, it really does sound like regulation could have fixed a couple of these yes. things. Yeah. Or could it be <laughs> Mothman? <laughs> oh, and East Palestine was about, that happened about two or three hours north of Point Pleasant. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. East yeah. Palestine. Palestine. Mm. Palestine, is that how they say yeah, it? That's how they say it. It's like Miami in Texas. Spelled Miami. They oh. call it Miami. I've said this like 20 times. Everybody, I, I, but then it you matter. say this, and then I'm going to get three emails from people like, oh, actually, it's called Miami. And, they, and, they say, and you're like, I don't. There's an umlaut. I over don't the eye. know. It doesn't make sense. There's only like 400 people there. Fucking nobody's listening in Miami. Great. If it even exists anymore. Many towns that I grew up with have since died. It is one of the craziest things as you travel across this fine country. There are just ghost towns everywhere. Oh, yeah. But bizarre deaths weren't just relegated to the areas outside of Point Pleasant. In 1976, 10 years after the Mothman flap and the bridge collapse, a woman named Harriet Sisk strangled her two-month-old daughter to death after Harriet tripped and fell while carrying her. Of course, the baby was crying. She wanted the baby to stop crying, oh. so she strangled it to death. But mm. the story doesn't end there. Okay. She buried the child with the help of her husband, Bruce, in a shallow grave. Maybe we should try a deeper grave. <laughs> yeah, it's always a shallow grave. Don't, if you're going to kill somebody, don't half-ass the burial. This yeah. is the time to put the work in. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and soon after, she confessed to the murder after the child's grandfather reported the baby missing. Four days after the confession, however, Bruce Sisk showed up at the county jail to fulfill a pact made with his imprisoned wife. Hmm. Carrying a suitcase and a shotgun, Bruce forced his way into his wife's cell and demanded to be left alone with what? her. Wanting to keep a close eye on the situation. Wanted to keep a close eye on the situation. <laughs> right, Why didn't right, they just? Yeah. So yeah. he just walked in and then he pulled out a shotgun out of a thing and he, he's in like, he bye, just, bye. He, well, he just pulled out a shotgun and say like, put me in the cell with my wife. And they kind of figured like, 
All right. I, all right. We better do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, that's where we want you. That's where you would have gone anyway. Honestly, I'll get right. it. I've been a husband five times. <laughs> so he was with, but they took the shotgun. No. They kept, they allowed him to keep the shotgun. They allowed him to keep the shotgun. This is my emotional support <laughs> shotgun. Okay, well, I, I can't argue with that. Most importantly, they allowed him to keep the suitcase. And of course, all of these sheriff's deputies, they were huddled in the wall that separated the office from the cells. They wanted to keep a close eye on the situation. Bit of a looky-loo. They wanted to know what was going on. I'm just curious as all hell. Unbeknownst to the deputies, the suitcase was filled with 15 pounds of dynamite stolen from the construction company where Bruce Sisk had formerly been employed. Oh! As it turned out, Bruce and Harriet had entered into a suicide pact wow. that was only discovered later when police searched their trailer and found a suicide note. Cool. Oh, I bet you dynamite had something to do with that coal mine exploding. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, they, they think it was a spark from a lantern or something like that. They, they thought it was a spark and just went Poof. You know what I will say? Dynamite didn't help. No. 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 And so... After just a couple of minutes alone, uh -oh. the two murderous lovers wow. went out with a bang, <sighs> killing themselves and three sheriff's deputies in the process. Whoa. Maybe I'm amazed at the way I love you. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. You know what was insane about Maybe this story I'm is amazed. I looked up the archive of the original newspaper article and the first line mentioned the bridge collapse. It was 10 years later, and they say in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, which a decade earlier was the site of a tragic accident on yeah. the Silver Bridge. It was a big fucking deal. Oh, Again, yes. This is what happens when you don't have like a Super Bowl to celebrate. You, <laughs> these are literally, <laughs> these are the time stamps yeah. of life. Yeah, your only references are tragedies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> But as tragic as all those deaths were, what Point Pleasant is most known for outside of the world of cryptozoology is, of course, that fucking silver bridge collapse. But for us, Point Pleasant is the land of the Mothman. Why yes. didn't you do anything, Mothman? There were so many things you could have done. <laughs> he can't interfere. He cannot interfere. Or perhaps he is not able to interfere. Perhaps he wants to, but cannot. And he looks at us like stupid little man says stupid people doing stupid things. <laughs> Is that how you see the view world? Us, you view us? No, no, no. these little men stupid. doing their stupid little <laughs> men things. No, I think it's real smart what you guys do. Thanks. I'll take yep. it. Yeah, real smart. Now, the Mothman had first been sighted near Point Pleasant in 1961, five years before the Mothman flap that made the Mothman famous. Hmm. That night, a witness said that he was driving down the road when a winged figure appeared before him. <sighs> Whoa! The creature unfurled its wings, and the, apparently the wings spanned the entire length of the road. They cool. were huge. Awesome. Then it took off like a bottle rocket straight up into the sky. See, it's the way cool. I, but the way I view it, because the Mothman will do this move many times in these sightings. It seems that wings unfurl, but the way they always talk about it was, again, not like a bird. It looks like a bird, but they a lot of them said it's closer to what they felt like a machine where mm. it was extending itself. And then they kind of watched it just lift up. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't go, up. it doesn't fly. Mm. It just does, does a thing where it's like slow moving, where it's just very, in a kind of like an obvious display. Yeah. Which we you hear a lot of times when people talk about UFOs. Do you think he's trying to courtimate? Well, does the idea, it wants to be seen. Yeah. Is there a, oh, I hope he's not super lonely, the Mothman. Oh, he's extremely lonely. No one ever listens to him. Oh. Well, nothing was seen of the Mothman for five years. Or perhaps it might be more accurate to say that nobody talked about seeing the Mothman for five years. 1966, however, was when the Mothman mania truly began. The story begins at an industrial waste site near Point Pleasant that was used by teenagers as the local makeout spot, a place to go <laughs> parking, as us small town folk like to put yeah, it. Yeah, and we were from, uh, I'm actually from an Italian American uh, New York, so we used to call it porking. <laughs> yes, indeed, I know you did. Nothing yeah. like the smell of human waste to really turn you on no, when I... you're with your hottest chick. And it's not human waste, it is chemical waste, my friend. Oh, it's even worse. No, yeah. That's great. Actually, I don't know if it is worse. It is worse because it can give you cancer. Oh, yeah. Oh! You know, honestly, yeah, yeah. No one gets poop. No one gets poopoo -poo cancer. You no, as a matter of fact, you're supposed to take other people's shit and jam it inside of you to stop <laughs> cancer. What? Yeah, fecal transplant. Yeah, it's fecal like transplant. totally real, dude. It, it is a fucking very real pervert thing. doctor. It's not I don't believe really in a single thing. I don't, I don't, like, I don't want to know. Keep your 
uncle shit out of my butt. <laughs> I don't it's care. A real thing. Ain't, you ain't putting. Oh, I spent how much on health care each year for you to come and put somebody else's fucking Buddy, shit in my butt? This is why we're going to die. In, we're going to die yelling. Yeah. All three of us. I'll put, if I put my shit in your fucking butt. <laughs> There nope. you go. Just I trying still, to help you. Just trying to help you out. I still think my last words are going to be whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah. Ah, that's great. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> See, back during World my War, my last my last words are going to be did I do that? Yes, I do think so. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And then you're going to watch a Hoover Dam explode. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Whoa, shit! Well, well, he did, did do that. that. See, back during World War II, munitions plants were built all across America, and Point Pleasant was chosen as the site of a TNT factory. They got to build it somewhere. Yep. These plants were not only dangerous, but highly toxic as well. This site in particular was named one of the 10 worst polluted sites in the entire country in 1983 because it had been leaking toxic waste into Point Pleasant's groundwater for who knows how long. Maybe even since it closed in 1945 because they just closed these places up and just left them. So far, no one has said yes to a TV show. This is our travel show. This we is go it. to the most polluted, polluted, places. polluted places in America. I love it. Worst yeah. places in America. Yeah, yeah that's I nice. tried to pitch this to Adult Swim a long time ago, where and this is true, where I want to do worst places in America, yeah. where it was me, Holden McNeely, and an MMA fighter that we would book. <laughs> and then we would go to the worst city and go to the worst bar and the worst restaurant yeah. in the worst cities that we could find and then do that. That's nice. And then I love see it. how we can make it. I love the idea. Now, exposure to all of this chemical waste can cause bitter tastes, burning eyes, and discoloration of the skin and hair. Hmm. But it does not cause psychosis or hallucinations. So any Joe Nichols who might Ooh. point towards groundwater contamination as a possible explanation for the Mothman flap can look for their spoilers elsewhere. So I don't think it helped. No. That's the equivalent of the swamp gas yes. type conversation. Yeah. Which I could see group poisonings happening, but no, sure, normally it doesn't involve in this type of like... Mm. Ex- extremely detailed photorealistic hallucinations are not really part of that. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's no. science. <laughs> you, just, you just burped like a cartoon walrus, by the way. It's just science. I hate a like... full carp on my way here. Bones and all. <laughs> must have. No, November 15th, 1966, at around 11.30 p.m., Roger and Linda Scarberry and another couple named Steve and Mary Mallet. And maybe it's probably just Mallet. If, I if, think if it's for, Mallet. If for, yeah. yeah, it's West Virginia. Yeah. Just go Mallet. They were riding around in Roger's 1957 Chevy Ooh. near the disused, abandoned TNT factory. I call it the finger popping wagon. <laughs> there you go. What a joyride it is. <laughs> See, it was considered good fun to wind around the dirt roads that connected the bunkers of the complex. But just as the couples drove past the old generator building, they saw the telltale red eyes of the Mothman on the side of the road. And I, I remember, and I was. I was watching a documentary called Search for the Mothman that has one of them, mm-hmm. the original sightings, and it's just like, Dad gummit, them, them red eyes, they weren't supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. And you're yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. giant Mothman. It's, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. And from what they could tell, the creature had gotten one of its wings caught in a guard wire, and it was Son trying what? to pull itself Son free. of a gun! Really? <laughs> Damn! Like you yell him like my father. Son of a gun! <laughs> so it is a little vulnerable, kind of like Ghostface, a mm-hmm. little screamy. Yeah. They also noticed that at the Mothman's feet was a dead dog. That dead dog will become important later. Hmm. Now, from what they could estimate, the creature was nearly seven feet tall, and its flesh was colored as that of a white man. The wings, despite... Yeah, because, you know... Yeah, I got it. I know. know. The wings, despite being caught on a fence, were described as angel-like and ashen, ten feet across if they were an inch. I... I don't, I'm not a it's, it's his I know it's a, it's a colloquialism. It's a it just doesn't make any. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. It's one of those. Ten feet long. Sense. If it was an it, well, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> My therapist asked me because I realize as a tick, I, I say the term. Not to be anything you in do. terms of like not yeah. to be an asshole or whatever. And my therapist finally was like, what does that even mean? Yeah. I realized I've been saying it for years. I've often wondered that myself. I know when you say not to be anything, you're about to say something like an Some, asshole. Something's <laughs> coming out. Something's coming yeah, out. So yeah, something's <laughs> definitely coming out. Like, not like, to, no, I'm not trying to offend anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From there, however, the description of the Mothman gets a little less sexy. Than from what you might imagine. <laughs> yeah, because we always, in our minds, remember, the audience has been poisoned. Not just by, like, just, yeah, we, we we sexify everything. Yeah, and sure. And most of the representation Mothman. of Mothman that you see, a lot of times, big, 
pectoral muscles. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Ass, huge cock. We did it. Yeah. Well, one of our artists did it in uh, the, our first Z2 comic. Yes. There was a pinup of Sexy Moth Man. Sexy Moth Man. And there was a mo- massive bulge in oh, that yeah. banana Oh, yeah. Of course. Hand. Really. Of course. Because no one really wants a, a three inch or somebody you marry. Yeah. A, harbor, <laughs> a harbinger of doom indeed. Well, the Moth Man was indeed manlike, but it had no arms. And it walked around like a penguin. That's the thing. It's all <laughs> legs. So, so the original Mothman. So remember, when you're seeing Mothman, it doesn't have arms. But yeah. its wings Mothman, are its arms. Its wings are its arms. Or a lot of times it's attached to its back. But they are. Oh. It's like Cousin It with two big eyes uh, in the center right. of it. And, the, and these flappy wings shooting out to the side. Okay. Now, it also had no distinguishable face. And it seemed to be headless apart from those massive round eyes. There's some people that believe it's far it more disturbing than what it's made out to be in the media. Yeah. But this is where the Mothman's giant bird thing is that they, what they're saying is that it's like, it might be perspective issue. Sure. Where like a vulture whose head is positioned, and if you're looking a vulture dead on, its, it's head heads, yeah. is within its body because yeah. you're just seeing it straight on. Where they're thinking mm. maybe the Mothman's head was lower and the thing, but I also tell you what, people don't like things with no heads. Yeah. I agree because with this that. Because this whole book is about seeing things with no heads. People don't like it, so I understand. But yeah. again, this is me trying to imagine that the Mothman's a bird, and I don't even fucking think it is a bird. Now, the couples in the car sat there watching it for a bit, somewhat mesmerized. But when it seemed like they startled it, they got the feeling that this creature might react aggressively. They have no fucking clue what it is, and it's massive. Well, it seems like it needs help. Yeah, well, I mean, but even so, if a cornered animal is often the most dangerous. Yeah, look at me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but when they started to feel it might get aggressive, they started screaming, go, 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 go. But the driver found himself unable to do so. Okay. While they did have the ability to speak, they were physically paralyzed. Very similar to a UFO scenario. Mm-hmm. They were only able to move once the Mothman got its wing loose and very quickly, Penguin waddled back to the generator building. I wish I didn't have to walk like this. Yeah. Some believe that it, that's where the Mothman made its home. Oh yeah, That was the Mothman's docked. house. I hope so. Well, once the couples were able to break free from their hypnotic state, they got out of there as fast as they could, but little did they know that the terror was just beginning. As Roger sped out of the TNT plant's winding roads, he found that the Mothman had returned and was keeping pace with the car, even as Roger reached speeds of up to 100 miles an hour. And all the while, even over the hysterical crying inside the car, they could hear a screech that sounded unsettlingly like a giant mouse. No, I was Weird. trying to. What does that mean? Like, that's what noise. That's what really. That's what they. No, that's more of a guinea pig. Well, have you ever heard a mouse in a glue trap? That's uh, like it's like a pitch that you almost don't hear. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it's like high and low like at that. the same time. Yeah, yeah. Fun noises with the yeah. boys. <laughs> <laughs> Mothman then began toying with them. Hmm. Just as they believed that the Mothman had lost interest, they turn a bend and find the Mothman waiting ahead of them, toxic, wow. as if to show them that no matter how fast they went, escape was impossible. Again and again, the couple would find Mothman waiting ahead, sitting on signs. Miss me? (laughs) Oh, over here. (laughs) More like over here. (laughs) Leave us alone. He'd be sitting on signs or flood walls, and as soon as the headlights hit him, he'd shoot straight up into the air. Bye bye. It's very much similar to Alan Cumming. If you've ever spent any time with him, the actor. Oh, little, little yeah. Man. yeah. You never know where he is. Abs- you're think, you're I just believe thinking, that. You're just thinking of him as Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler, <laughs> indeed. Wow, yeah. yeah, I forgot he was Nightcrawler. Yeah, he that's was what, Nightcrawler. That's all you're thinking of. I was thinking of him as the MC from Cabaret. Ooh. Well, the last- <laughs> mm. Yes, indeed. I love that movie, Cabaret. <laughs> well, the last time they saw Mothman, it was crouched with its wings tucked behind its back as if to signal that the game was over. Yeah, like, I'm done. I'm He's done. Okay, done. I'm not here for you. Bored. Mm-hmm. You interrupted my night. Yeah. yeah. Now, even though what they just experienced was objectively bananas, the couples immediately drove to the nearest phone, the one at Tiny's drive in. He was actually very big. <laughs> I believe that. And they reported to the sheriff what they'd seen. I saw that the the, wow. the very solemn face of the woman that was like who saw this first Mothman sighting. And this is one of those issues where like people always like oh you know they just trying to make that mothman money and no. you're like no 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 there's no, no, no. They're money from in west mothman. virginia they didn't know what money was <laughs> like they don't even know they literally dig toxic rocks out of mountains until they die for money so yeah. the idea of a concept there's a part of me that thinks like you know it's just extremely imaginative 
for a woman that looks like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's there just been like, I've never seen something so mysterious and enigmatic. And you're like, I, you know, I believe it. You look like you didn't yeah. know what the fuck she, cause she, but she did the drop it. She's like, but I know what I saw. Yeah. And, I was with, and I was with uh, my husband at the time, and he was two fingers deep, and I can't lie. <laughs> I can't lie when mm. he's so deep inside. Yeah. Well, it, absolutely, you can't. You can't lie when they're when, you, when he's up to the knuckle. <laughs> 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 no, that's the, that's, the time, that's the truth zone. Oh, he's using that trigger. He's using that trigger finger. <laughs> it's the court of law truth zone. Give her the truth zone. Oh, yeah, you mean like Smith and Messing? Oh, Smith okay, and great. Now, the sheriff did accuse the couples of being on drugs because this was, after all, 1966. But he did take them seriously enough to send some guys out to the old TNT plant. While those officers found nothing concrete, one swore that he saw shadows circling the plant. Most interestingly, the dead dog that was on the side of the road was now gone. Ooh, that was dinner. This, however... Oh, see, I don't think it was dinner. You don't but, think so? Well, I'll get to it later. I got a okay. theory. Okay. This, however, was only the beginning of the Mothman flap. And for some reason, Mothman began to target one of the passengers from the car chase, Linda Scarberry. Now, I actually have hmm. some. This is a clip of John Keel talking about one of what if he believes are one of the one of the attracting factors to a Mothman, like what makes a Mothman riled up. Uh, and he talks about the stories that he believed there was a local, there was a blood truck like where people would go and give blood. The, okay. And a, a blood, blood donation mobile. mobile. Yeah. And that there was a, uh, a, this is where this starts, where he saw, they, there was witnesses who said they believed that they saw a Mothman trying to attack this blood mobile. But it goes a lot farther than that. All right. And this thing hovered over the blood mobile. They, they could, first they sensed it, and then they looked out the windows and looked up, and whatever it was, it was a huge thing. And they thought that uh, some like claw-like things were descending and going to grab the blood mobile. This is John Kim. And uh, he drove out of there. Then there were a number of other cases that tied it in with blood. What cinched it for me was in talking to female witnesses, I would ask them about their menstrual period. <laughs> and a lot of these women who claim to have been chased in automobiles uh, were having their menstrual period at the time. And that, that seemed to me to be a major clue of some sort. What's that got to do with it? <laughs> well, you never know, Mark. I mean, honestly, don't Back go to... Back man, I'm a scientist. He also then goes on to say it's very similar to the cattle mutilations. Yeah, Where sure. the cattle mutilations are sucked dry of blood, and he just yeah. loves the word anus as well. But he's well, a scientist. Great. He's well, a social scientist. <laughs> died a bachelor. Yeah. Be careful. If you're bleeding from your asshole, Marcus, we're canceling our show in West Virginia. My asshole has not bled in a very long time. Fantastic. I found a medication called mesalamine. You know, I just have to take these massive massive pills every single morning and you know no blood haven't, haven't had blood in years so it wow. just keeps the it's a pill that keeps the blood inside that's a whole no, other mystery pill. it doesn't keep the blood inside it keeps the wound from bleeding i think i'm not sure i don't know how we it don't works. know because i would say it makes more sense if it went up your butt I see that there's like a plug. There's actually two ways that you can do. It. I did use the suppository for a little while, but the thing is about suppositories <laughs> yeah. is that like it, it actually gets tedious after a little yeah, while. Shoving yeah. stuff yeah. up your asshole, so, shoving something up your yeah. asshole yeah. every single day. Yeah, it gets tedious. Yeah, yeah. 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 I would yeah. say so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're yeah. Not, if it's not a vibrator right. and you're not like in on vacation yeah. on your anniversary, yeah. Yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. No, it gets to be tedious. Yeah, and finally, I just asked my gastroenterologist, "Is like, isn't there like a pill or something?" And she's like, "She's like, oh yeah, absolutely." I just thought you were. <laughs> just why, why, just like, go right to that. Like, I would. Yeah. Like, why like, didn't you, you just know. give me the pill in the first place? Well, she She's knew like, you were gonna have fun with the ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's because you yeah. used to sit on that cone, that parking cone. <laughs> yeah. Just bring it around. Yeah. 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 She's like, well, the suppositories work better. And it's like, well, start me on the pills. Yeah. And if the and pills we'll, don't then work, we'll then on. let's kick it up a notch. Well, this is actually gonna be great when you go to prison and you have to deliver the most important message to the mafia boss. You mm -hmm. can suitcase like a motherfucker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You'll be able to get that right up in there. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, traumatized. Well, let's move on. <laughs> but maybe it was her menstruation. <laughs> yes, it was. So the menstruation. Now, if so, the Mothman, is he like, is he mosquito-ish? Does he need others' blood to survive? I don't think so. Well, okay. I mean, there is a local legend that is vampiric, but we'll get to that later. Live from your grave. 
Now, Linda Scarberry became one of John Keel's go-to interviewees when it came to his Mothman research, and some people therefore suggest that Keel's influence may have colored Linda's perspective. Hmm. I mean, he's probably the only person calling her, right? No. Uh, I just want to say it's just been so nice to be a part of this Mothman experience with you. It's just so, so good. I, you know, again, uh, if you want to come by anytime, uh, obviously I got a lot of... I, I got a lot of time in my hands. Yeah, you're lonely. <laughs> I just don't really... Yeah. Know. Because he's walking stumps. They don't follow themselves. <laughs> no, they don't. It's up to you, Keel. God, I just could use a little kiss. <laughs> I know. It's a sad. tiny little one. I'd imagine he got one or two like long hugs from Linda after some visits. I'm sure he did. <laughs> It's just hard to be a man who's saddled with the truth. Exactly. But even so, Linda did believe that the Mothman haunted her for quite a while after that first night. About a month after the chase, Linda said that she saw the Mothman sitting on the roof of her house with its arms, legs, and wings folded around itself. Which is interesting because when she first saw the Mothman, there were no arms or legs. Oh. Shape-shifting. Oh, oh, that. Oh, yes. <laughs> that makes sense. Shape yeah, shifting. Neutrinos. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you talking about neutrinos with Bigfoot? This is exactly, this is all tied in. Mm-hmm. Mothman was looking at her through the window, but Linda said that the Mothman did not seem threatening. Linda felt that he was trying to communicate something, but even though he was not threatening, it was still a Mothman. And she right. was too scared to understand the message that he was no trying to give to her. No will let me flirt. It's just you're no scary. One has a bridge. <laughs> yeah, it's just real scary. Well, again, if the guy's just screwing about the bridge all the time, you're just like, yeah. just fucking again. Let's just get to know me. Ask me questions. Why Absolutely. the bridge? When the bridge? <laughs> Absolutely. And what of course, the bridge? And Which bridge? Where and of course where? Yes. Melinda also said that she and many others started seeing UFOs in the area after her experiences with the Mothman. Interesting. Although her UFO experience was one of the more unique ones, she said that her UFO looked like a blooming rose of many colors. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's like psychedelic. Yeah, it's very psychedelic. She said it was brighter and more brilliant than anything she'd ever seen. More colors than colors, if you get my meaning. Yeah. Well, I am actually going to channel the sheriff here. Was she on drugs? I I feel like she could have been on toxic TNT fumes. Yeah. Now, Linda said that she knew of at least 40 people who also saw the Mothman during the 13-month flap. Oh, yeah. And a lot of those people saw him more than once. From this, she believed that there may have been, in fact, many Mothmen. The concept of bird men as a whole, is a big part of cryptozoology and this, whatever you call this, cryptid world. There's a lot of bird men out there. Uh, John Keel believes that there was at least, he said he recorded himself a hundred sightings of the Mothman and Mm. his view was that that meant there must have been at least three or four times that amount of people who had actually seen the Mothman. The number I heard was a thousand. I mean, it's you can say now, anything. You know what I, I, I heard? Do, what I heard was. What I heard was. <laughs> you can literally say anything. Any amount. I do kind of now think that that someone had uh, just said anything. Yeah, you can. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's great about it. It's amazing. But by Linda's estimation, and this is an interpretation I'm willling to accept. The Mothman, So it's your interpretation of her estimation. It's my. This is solid evidence. Science. <laughs> it is my interpretation of her estimation. Yes. The Mothman had no ill intent nor did it do anyone any harm. No. Really, all it did was scare the hell out of people. That's just its nature. Now, Linda did go a bit far when she was interviewed by author Donnie Sergent, who wrote another Mothman book called Mothman, The Facts Behind the Legend. There's so many Mothman books. Yeah. Yeah, I think there isn't there one called Mothman Evil Incarnate? Oh, yeah, we're, I have that one. I have the other one who is Mothman Speaks. There's the Mothman's Photographer, one through three. Wow. There's like a bunch of different, you got the John Keel Mothman books. It's mm-hmm. a lot of, there's a lot of literature. Yeah. Okay. The Mothman's Wife. The I girl, got both. The, the Girl with the Mothman Tattoo. I just bought that. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. See, as I said earlier, Linda had gotten quite close to John Keel over the years, and she therefore got pretty deep into the part of the Mothman storyline involving the men in black. Hmm. Linda believed that the Mothman was actually used as a distraction from various men in black activities in the area. Specifically, she believed that there was a secret plan by the men in black to whisk children away and quote unquote shape their minds. Oh my God. But I know for a fact that the men in black were actually the smokescreen. They were the ones there. They were, again, former Nazi right. scientists. They were had their brains broken by MK Ultra training, and now they're there to distract everyone while the Mothman right. trying to warn everybody that the fucking that's not they weren't. He was there about the bridge. He was there about the 
Nazi UFO program mm-hmm. in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. So she thought they were just whisking kids away to change their brains. Isn't that the military? Isn't that <laughs> what they so. do when they go to your high school and be like, hey, you can get out of class. I All mean, you, you can do is give degree. us your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Henry, you say so much about the Nazis. You say so much about UFOs. But Linda Scarberry has a much different interpretation. She believed... She claimed that a man in black <laughs> appeared in her daughter's room when the child was just five years old. Okay. And the only oh. reason why the Mib didn't take the baby was because there was a, a crucifix in the room. So there is also that to consider when listening to Linda Scarborough. It's nothing but facts. Honestly, every first date in West Virginia, <laughs> we just had it. But maybe because all this sounded so crazy, Linda was reluctant to discuss Mothman with anyone except for the professional paranormal and Fortean investigators yes. who came to interview her. The okay. truly trustworthy men. Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone in Point Pleasant, despite their recent embrace of the phenomenon, which I find to be a bit hypocritical, they made fun of her for talking about the Mothman. What seems to be sort of a self-protective measure mm. where you're sitting there and you're like, I can't even believe she believe in the Mothman. Meanwhile, all no. night they're just like... Sitting scared, being like, is that his red eyes? Is that his red eyes? No. Absolutely. I mean, it's too scary to believe in. Mm-hmm. Linda actually just wanted everyone to leave the Mothman alone. Because if the Mothman wanted to harm anyone, it would have done so already. Absolutely. I mean, at the same time, Mothman chased a bunch of people driving. That's very irresponsible of the Mothman. Well, it's kind of fun, though, as well. He's just much like dogs will chase a car. Uh-huh. He's still just an animal. He wants to have a good time. He won't even know what to do if he gets a hold of it. Mm-hmm. No, he wouldn't. And I'll also get into maybe why. The rational why as to Mothman's chasing of cars. That's all I seek. But here's the most mysterious thing about Linda Scarberry's experience with the Mothman. Donnie Surgent asked her if there were any details about the Mothman that she had never shared publicly, never shared with anyone. Hmm. And she said, yes, <laughs> and she never will. Oh, ho, 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 baby, she about to have a couple of moth kids. <laughs> Why did she tell? Yeah, it was gonna be, and she had a bit of an experience with some mothballs. Oh, baby, you want? Oh my, you want to? You want to oh. spread that right in there? Put it. I got a bright light. You spread that wide open, and the moth kids gonna fly right out of you. All she has to do is tell us her secrets. Moth She's moth 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 man. She can help us. She better. had sex with mothman. I don't. I, I That's why heard she'll never tell. <laughs> I haven't heard that, about the dick and balls. Well, we don't. We don't know. I mean, sex can happen without a dick and balls. You Whoa. heteronormative fucking Whoa, piece of butthole shit. butthole to butthole? <laughs> However you want to do it. Elbow to elbow? You know what? That's the thing, Henry, is if butthole to butthole does exist, then that means that you had sex with your dog the other night. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. You <laughs> farted wow. in Wendy's butthole, but we don't talk. Also, you may have just saved her life. We were I talking, put my shit in her shit. You put your shit in her <laughs> shit because she was having some tummy issues and you, you're a steel trap. We are. Yeah, we were butthole to butthole, but not. I had pants on. Yeah, and for more details about that, go watch the archives of Laugh Stream on the left. Thank you. Yes, Laugh Stream on the left. I was wearing pants. I know. Now, just after the chase scene at the DNT plant, the story of this mysterious flying creature got picked up by a paper in Ohio. The copy editor was a big fan of the Batman TV show. But since he couldn't call the creature Batman, he decided the next best thing with wings was a moth. Hence, Mothman. Okay. Well, Mothman is also, it's a good, it's great branding. It is. It is. A, moth, a moth is creepy in its way because we don't know what they do. They just, and they're slow. But yeah. also neutral. Like when I see yes. a moth, yeah. I don't really freak out. Mosquitoes, you hate, hate them. Hate mosquitoes. Flies are like, can you stop? But a moth, you're like, all right. Well, no, it's it's. It'll eat your shit, <laughs> though. Cute. It'll eat your clothes. I I hate moths. Do you? I yeah. They're kind of creepy. Yeah. When, well, when I was a kid, I had a moth infestation in our in my room for some reason or another. And when I would go to sleep at night, the moths. I was the warmest thing in the room, so the moths kept pinking me on the head all night long. Right. Just well, Marcus, me and we me don't and know all of your past trauma. Before we start talking, so yeah, we don't we know. Have to take that into consideration. Yeah, yeah, I'm know. just saying. I, Did I'm anyone just... else, were, were any other rooms in your home that it was a fully you had all like a ceiling and stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I mean, any, any other rooms have moths? We, we all grew up middle class. Yeah, we, I had yeah. a ceiling. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't like, put, he wasn't but in the bar. any other rooms in the house have moths? No. No, just yours. Okay. So, no. It was just I think it might have been his activity. And God knows we had under the bed. So he had a gremlin <laughs> outside of his window and a bunch of moths <laughs> in his room and Ted Bundy <laughs> pictures on the wall. I wonder why your parents were worried. Yeah. They've just been <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know if he's going to grow up to take over the ranch. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they gave up that dream long ago. Yeah. Just yeah. something with Marcus as he's just licking rocks. I just don't know if he's going to be the rancher boy we needed. I don't know if he's going to be in charge of the land. You know what's nice? Me and my mother used to go rock collecting together. It's really sweet. Yeah, it I really is. Yeah. No, I'm connecting with him. No, <laughs> I'm God. not. No, I'm not making him Thank weak. God. I'm connecting with him. Thank God your parents were exactly who they are. <laughs> Very proud. Yes. Wonderful people. I love them. But that's the interesting thing about Mothman is that it was not the people who named the creature. It was an editorial decision. That's that what is that interesting. Meant. It's the same thing. It's very funny. It's it, That's like, get me pictures of the Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. That is interesting, though. Now, of course, the people involved with the first encounter became a laughing stock, and I'm sure they spent the next weeks, months, and years yelling, I know what I saw. And what's the point of just laughing at it? I, I feel like people like this make the... This is why life is fun. That's why it's fun. Yeah, but that's the thing is that some people take the fun and they turn into their own fun, and their own fun is really mean. Like, hey, Linda, you see any moth man this today? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's Linda, true. Let me into your menstruating. <laughs> <laughs> you know how them moths come around when you got that blood panty. <laughs> but even with the ridicule that came to Linda and the rest, more and more people began reporting encounters with the moth man. On the same night as the first encounter, a man named Newell Partridge wow. was 90 miles away, relaxing with his dog Bandit while watching TV. Suddenly, the TV switched off and Bandit went nuts. Newell went outside with a flashlight only to find two large red eyes staring back. No! the red eyes. (laughs) Bandit leapt to attack whatever it was, but both the Mothman and Bandit disappeared. Bandit paid for his overeager response and was never seen again. But I like to think that Newell Partridge was a mean old man who didn't treat Bandit as he should have been treated. And that the dead dog that was seen on the side of the road, that was Mothman's dog. And Mothman was sad because his dog had died. And so Mothman (sighs) was just replacing his dog with a new dog that needed rescuing. And Bandit was Mothman's best friend from that day forward. Just let him have it. That's conjecture. Yeah, let him just have (laughs) it. That's conjecture. He's allowed to. I I, I think that the only thing that Newell was remotely close to nice to who was that dog? <laughs> he might have been, but yeah. I'm just saying, let him have this. This, is, this allows Marcus <sighs> to exist. I imagine the Mothman to be a friendly character in my mind. We've all established I he's neutral at worst. Yeah. I, I don't think he's a blood eating, he's not a blood drinking monster. Yeah. He's not a monster. He's a psychic phenomena that is becoming physical because it is a collective unconscious response yeah. to a possible gigantic tragedy. But happening. he yeah. ate Bandit. Yeah. And he ate no, that he other dog. No, Yo, just, he did. No, I just think of Mothman with a little dog named Bandit. I mean, that's cute. Yeah, but yeah. He, there's no other, no one's seen him with dogs other than really? dead dogs. And you think it's all cute and nice, and yeah. then he's just like, meet my wife, bandit. And you're oh like, my. Ugh, ugh, you're yeah. fucking it? Oh, you, you're the one that brought bestiality into yeah, this. You bring when bestiality the moth, into when it. there's no evidence of the Mothman committing bestiality. There's no evidence that the saying, Mothman likes dogs. Oh, I know how to drain bandit, if you know what I mean. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh, he farts in his dog one time, all of a sudden he's an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> I know. Well, the next night, a couple named the Wamsleys and their friend Marcella Bennett, along with Marcella's infant child, they were on their way to pop in on a friend who lived near the TNT dump. The friend wasn't there, but as the group started walking back to their car, they saw the Mothman lurking behind their vehicle. <sighs> the creature slowly rose from the ground, but to them, He did not have the same Caucasian flesh color. He instead appeared to be gray, but he still had the same unsettling red eyes. That's the thing that's constant all throughout. Again, everyone was paralyzed, although Marcella Bennett was so scared that she fell over and she fell on her baby. Yeah, this (laughs) woman, I did see an interview with her and she was just like, and I'll be frank. I thought I killed it, <laughs> but I knew that I was paralyzed and I felt like a plank right on top of it. Yeah. But you know what? You'd be cra- you'd be amazed at how many inches a baby can officially squish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Baby's very flexible, pliable. Finally, though, the Mothman stood up and extended its massive 10-foot-long wings. Yes. That seemed to break the spell because the mm. witnesses immediately ran back to their friend's house to call the sheriff. When he arrived, though, the Mothman had long since 
flown away. Honestly, this was a fun town to be the sheriff in. Oh, mm-hmm. this guy He's a real ghostbuster. It truly must be very, you know, it's boring. But remember the Pennsylvania Bigfoot flag? They cops hated they it. Hated they were mad. It. They were mm. mad because, again, they just thought it was stupid. Yeah. And they didn't want anybody, like, because, again, what does the sheriff love to do more than anything else? Sit. Nothing. Yeah. Sit yeah. His, yeah and so it's car. like, so the idea of having to get out of the car and show up, you have to go out in the brush. Right. You know what I mean? You got to get your shoes dusty. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's obviously illegal to file a false police report, but these aren't, are, they're not no, false they're, police reports. They're saying they saw a thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, as it usually happens with flaps, there were dozens of other paranormal goings on happening at the same time as the Mothman yes. flap. You had UFO sightings, yes. poltergeist activity, and such and such. Yes, so literally people seeing, the what I said before, people seeing weird cyclops things, people seeing weird things in the woods, mm. other characters showing up, like it, it, and, a, and a lot of ghost activity. Yeah. But the Mothman sightings themselves were curiously inconsistent, although I want to make it clear that I don't say that with a skeptical tone. One person described the Mothman as a brown human gliding through the trees, while another said that it was only four feet tall instead of the standard seven. But while the height changed, this is interesting, the 10-foot wingspan always stayed the same. I do think it's because it's a number that people can choose to try to explain that it had very big wings. Because, again, scientifically, if it was a big fucking bird and it had the body of a human, the wings would need to be like 30 feet long for it to fly. Uh, ah, But on the other hand, I did pose this question to you earlier. I wonder if the people that made those calculations took into account the fact that a bird's bones are hollow. I was going to say that. I don't know. I don't know if they are insufferable pricks. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) That's why a bird is a little bit lighter. (laughs) Well, still others said that it wasn't bird-like at all, but it was more of a flying humanoid. Some people that saw the Mothman flying around Tiny's drive-in, they said that it had, like, legs dangling Dangling off the side of it like it was on the Batman ride. Oh, my goodness. Like, when you used to get toys as a kid and their legs would start to fall when you would fly with them. I used to tape them so they didn't fall down. I was very precious with my toys. Mm -hmm. As you should have. But it's very creepy in that way because they say, again, the way it operated was really strange. People had very specific things of what they saw yeah. right they, they yeah. said these and there's something too because again i think a lot of it could be equated to still you know people also said it looked like a kind of like a man in a suit you know what i mean like you know this is the time traveling human beings shit we've been talking we were maybe yep. dealing with right now with the whistleblowers like with the, the ufo disclosure movement talking sure. about like some of the stuff might be time traveling human beings yeah and- i thought you were gonna say it might have been all the opioids <laughs> That was before the opioids. Yeah, this, this is pre-opioids. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is These way are before clear-minded the clear-minded West Virginians. Yeah, well, okay. I wouldn't say clear-minded. Well, but, you know. <laughs> that not, oh, not oxy. Not oxy. Not yeah. oxy. Not oxy. Straight up just mountain ignorance. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, let's not malign the people You're of West correct. Virginia no, too much. Not, I mean, it's a good old booze. Well, yeah, I love booze. it. Yeah. No, people live in normal lives, and Laura Linney makes a joke in the horrible the, the Mothman prophecies. She'd be like, yes, we had homes. They don't live on farms. You know, mm-hmm. and Richard yeah. Gere was like, that's amazing. Can't believe it. That's the most. But the most incredible thing could this Mothman keeps is. calling me. This Mothman is calling me all night. I can't sleep. And then he pulled that gerbil. Yeah, great. All Thank right. you. Great, great. Well, I mean, to put my skeptic hat on, just briefly. Well, it's on. Yeah, it's on. I mean, this could be explained by simple psychological phenomena. Of course. I mean, it could be that, you know, this is a game of telephone that's going on, is that one person describes seeing the mm-hmm. Mothman. And then, of course, since our brains are designed to look for patterns, people are thinking about the Mothman. So they see a strange pattern that looks kind of like the Mothman. That's so the Mothman. Yeah, so that's the Mothman, and that's what the Mothman looks like to them. That could very well be the case, but that does not discount the original sighting of the Mothman. You okay. don't, gotta, you know, don't fucking keep me in the pen. I know mm. what's going there on. There you go. A skeptic scap is now off. But the one thing besides... So it, skeptic it pants are down. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. Well, the one thing besides the wingspan that stayed constant was that the Mothman loved chasing cars. It could keep up at any speed without showing any signs of fatigue or strain. Look how fast I'm going. Yeah. I mean, Look how fast I'm going. There's something very innocent about this. If you're the Mothman, that's what else are you going to do? Yeah. They drive around for fun. He chases the cars for fun. He's doing it's his own... It's par for the course. That's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. He's cruising. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But here's where we can get into the cryptozoological interpretations of the Mothman itself. Now, again, I'm going to apologize immediately for this cl- very classic reductivism. Oh, <laughs> I mean, very complex topic. Well, it's Mothman Redux. That's the episode. See, cryptozoology. <laughs> I mean, just they both share the set. Reduct. 
They they just shared it's, sounds. He, he, it's got, just he similar he, sounds. He did good. He did well, good. technically, I'm a master of the English language. <laughs> Well, cryptozoologist Mark Hall claims that moth men began appearing in the 60s because of the ubiquitous nature of cars. His theory is that they don't actually chase cars, but rather use the artificial air currents to fly further and faster with less energy. It's just Tokyo Drift? They're just drifting? They're They're just drifting. drifting. Can I I say Hmm. that that... But that is stupid. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that is stupid. But just the idea, because I feel why like would we would able, see, they're, they're, we'd see a lot more Mothman. All the time. We'd well, see them all the time. Also, why would they follow trains or planes or anything else? That's, that's too fast. That's too fast. too fast. Well, trains would be too slow. Train and is, I actually think this is the too, dumbest. And the airplane's too high. But yes, you do they wonder fly. why you wouldn't see them on the highways. But perhaps that's too fast. Yeah, but, but on the other hand, no, they're going fast. 100 miles per hour. It's not too fast. <laughs> I actually think that that man is making a false correlation. Yes, the increase of cars does exist with the increase of uh, Mothman sightings. But these are just two. It's, it's a serious relationship I'm just at saying best. We're attacking him I just already. Think it's, I actually really think that's dumb. I, it is. But, you know, we've, we're attacking him. Let's hear his point. Let's well, hear yeah, his point. It's, yeah, because not- yeah, Hall... He doesn't refer to the Mothman as Mothman. Okay. He does not think it is a moth, nor does he think it is a man. Instead, Hall believes that the moth... <laughs> I hate this. I don't like this guy. I mean, I don't mind. No, this, this, is next bit, this next bit, like, infuriates me. <laughs> I- Sorry. Okay. Okay. Hall believes that Mothman is a giant... <laughs> well, I, I got to hear what this is now. <laughs> All right. It's a giant owl that he calls Big Hoot. <laughs> he says the Big Hoot. I hate so the Big Hoot. It's an owl named Big Hoot. I hate the All Big right. Hoot. I mean, it's a pun. The pun works yes. a lot better when you see it written down than yeah. when it's said big out loud. Big Hoot. Because yeah. otherwise it'd be like Big Hoot. Big Hoot. Yeah. Which means nothing. The Big Hoot. The Big Hoot. I hate <laughs> the Big, the big hoot. hoot. It is. Because again, it sounds like a chicken deal. <laughs> It Tell really. Me, have you does. ever had the big hoot and, and big hoot. Jackies? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, it, it also sounds like you went to the doctor and you got three days to live, and they just call it the big hoot. Or yeah, you got one good tit. Yeah, it's a big hoot. <laughs> you didn't want to do that, mom? Mom, my, my, my big hoot is doing a lot <laughs> of the flirt. A goddamn owl, huh? Yeah, big hoot. All yeah, right, these ideas hoot. that like the Bigfoot, the people that say that the Bigfoot is an undiscovered primate mm-hmm. that we don't we don't know understand, or some kind of former descendant, an actual descendant of humankind that yeah. is like it's quote unquote hiding for its own good. It understands our nature and doesn't want to be near us. That his idea is that the big hoot is something <laughs> like that. That yes. it's some kind of primordial <laughs> giant hoot owl. that exists yeah, in it. And, and that I guess understands <laughs> things Dude. better than others yeah. hoots. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Well, I guess I, I'm just calling him hoots now. Th- well, this guy's got he's any type of bird that ain't us. It's either a squawk. What's the point? A <laughs> chirp or a hoot. It's a hoot. What's the point? You know, just just, just have um, fun with it. Yeah. You know? he's he's allowed. Fun. Well, I don't know. Yeah. That's the thing. I no, think he's not having fun with it. He's like, it's an owl. It's, he's big a, hoot. Yeah. it's a big hoot. Well, he's big. I mean, big hoot is having fun with it. You know. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, well to bolster this supposition, Mark Hall used the same source that a lot of cryptozoologists use. Hall points towards local tribal legend. Yes. Which okay. ain't a bad place to start when you, again, consider the gorilla. But, and also, giant birds within tribal tradition are extremely, like, there it's it's a lot it's yeah. really yeah, really course. but that whole subject i didn't actually really understand how important it was to yeah. a lot of their folklore oh yeah now according to local tribal folklore reports of giant bizarre birds around point pleasant have existed for centuries big squawks big chirps <laughs> big <laughs> hoots mm-hmm. the All names three. of these the names of these creatures translate to either flying head or big head depending on the tribe these okay. are cool yeah. i like that yeah. these creatures are described as being huge bodiless heads covered in long hair, cool. sporting sharp claws like nails, and of Ooh. course, fiery red eyes. Ah. Oh. As opposed to your friendly neighborhood Mothman, though, these creatures were also vampires that induced illnesses so they could feast upon the dead. Hmm. Well, why? I mean, all right. I mean, I guess, but wouldn't that taint the blood? Wouldn't that be like eating a hamburger after you drop it on the ground? No, it's a head. It's got no the blood. The blood's going nowhere. If it drinks blood, it's a giant head. No, it's making the blood bad. So because that's the thing, if it'll kill the person. It kills the person. But then doesn't it doesn't that the taint to, the blood. No, because it's the one that tainted it. Big heads don't have a direct okay. biological corollary to anything. It's just a head. <laughs> it's just a head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just all. Yeah, of this. this is a story. This is a story. This is just a total make believe. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. it's folklore. Folklore. Yeah, it's like the kelpie. You so know? I would say this is a make them up. 
it's, 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 it's an a, old story. It's an gotcha. old story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It could be a metaphor for something. Who knows? Sure. I don't know. Could be. Most interestingly, though, flying heads and big heads were considered to be harbingers of doom. Okay. Just as the Mothman would soon himself be considered. And there's other cryptids that are also a part of it. I did a little bit of research into it, but I'll just say it just because there's really not much. But the Blackbird of Chernobyl Mm -hmm. is another bird-like cryptid that was seen... What they said in the build, the lead up to the Chernobyl disaster was that people were seeing this giant thing outside of the nuclear power plant. And I don't know whether or not this is all just all of these things kind of slamming together. And at retrospect, like people looking back, thinking about Mothman, thinking about these things that they saw. Right. But people seeing giant bird like creatures with glowing red eyes is kind of an international phenomenon. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, Mothman haunted Point Pleasant for 13 months. And John Keel estimated that, okay. This is where people just gave me a make up number. John, they said that John Keel estimated that there were over a thousand Mothman encounters. He's just saying, you know, he's, he, I think that John Keel is just saying there's a lot. I think there's the a lot. Guy, it's potentially a thousand. I think the guy who was writing about John Keel just said there was a lot. I think it might just be a hundred. John Keel is just, a, he is, a, he's also, he's a showman. He is a showman, but yeah. I, I think it's closer to 100. You heard his talk. Yeah. <laughs> we really should get to the uh, facts here. Yeah. Well, they saw, uh, let's, hey. Just the facts. <laughs> <laughs> well, they also had dozens of UFO sightings, heavy poltergeist activity, and of course, visits from the men in black. Mm. But some believe that this entire flap was all the CIA black ops experiment to see how Americans might react to a Cold War flying saucer disinformation Get invasion. The program. And okay. Co- and considering the kinds of shit we did with MK Ultra and all the rest of the experiments we performed on populations, both large and small, remember we gassed New York's city yep that isn't a bad guess no what's interesting about this theory though is that the loudest proponent an author named jim keith died mysteriously during a routine knee surgery after he fell off a stage at burning man yeah <laughs> that never happens <laughs> wait but what year was that <laughs> Oh, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Up. And Hurry, that is the only that thing about this. Is there's other things too. David Grabius, right? Who's the director of the Search for Mothman documentary? Yeah, he was supposed to go to interview John Keel in Point Pleasant mm-hmm. for his 2002 documentary, right? Yeah, and they were going to fly Keel from his Manhattan home to West Virginia. Wow. to do the taping, right? But guess what? He didn't make that flight. He didn't go because his flight was canceled because the day he was supposed to fly, September 11th, 2001. So and okay, so yes, yeah, against spurious, but what would be? And then how do you? And then you got to do it. So what does that mean? So what, what's the combo? I know nine eleven, Mothman oh. guy was going to interview John Keel. Coincidences? <laughs> coincidences. Okay, great. So you're saying it's a coincidence? Mm, yeah. Are there any coincidences? <laughs> I, don't, uh, uh, I think there's actually a, a strange amount of coincidences. Uh, Jim Keith died after the 1999 Burning Man, which oh. I would imagine would have been a pretty sick Burning Man. To be oh, honest yeah. with you, that's pre-corporate Burning Man. Oh, that yeah. would have been when, fun. Before true no one Burning knew Man. what Burning Man was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's Mad Max days, Burning Man. Oh. And also, the publisher of both his and John Keel's books, Jim Keith and John Keel's books, yeah. he died needlessly in a hospital while being treated for food poisoning. Yep. People die. <laughs> There's no such thing as coincidences, not in this life. No. <laughs> it's just so wrong. Everything <laughs> happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. Henry Thomas, don't you understand? It's like, yes, I know you couldn't be you're famous. You're not being famous. Mm-hmm. But think what you get to do. You get to spend so much time with your family. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Who wants to be in Paris <laughs> drinking wine with <laughs> whole cylinders of cocaine? And I will quote something that I recently read, watched, or heard. <laughs> I don't remember where it was from. He Spurious. takes a lot of information. Yeah, I do take in a lot of information. I believe in coincidences, but I don't trust coincidences. Thank you. Nine <laughs> eleven. You yeah, know what? Also, it just is doesn't difficult? matter. It's you just... know how you know also someone is truly difficult if they call it nine one one. Oh, I, yeah. That's how you know someone yeah, you, is a yeah. difficult person. But you of course, end that, that was, conversation that because was... they believe that by saying nine eleven, they are contributing to a, a b- false magic, narrative, a gigantic. Uh, what do you call it? Magic uh, ritual. ritual. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And a false narrative. Yeah, they call it nine one one. Well, that's great. That's that's a good way to protect yourself. Yeah. Just no. Just no ahead. 
ahead of time before you take that job. Yeah. If your boss is saying 911 all the time, if he's talking about 911 a lot, and if he starts right. to put it in the job interview, <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, oh hey, what, what's this about? Is yeah. this um, at the museum? Like, if it's not a job <laughs> at the museum, then you should. Right. Leave. But regardless of what the Mothman was, why all of this was happening, or who was behind it, there is still the very real matter of the bridge. Which is where we'll pick back up next week for the oh. conclusion to our Mothman doubleheader. And we're wow. going to have so much more absolute ironclad proof hey. that Mothman was at 9 11 <laughs> and <laughs> did nothing. Did nothing. Uh, but All no, right. we'll, we'll get into more wooey woo, mm -hmm. but, but also kind of like could cover more of these cases. And then again, we're bringing in our old buddy, Injured Cold, who we haven't really gone into full depth. We've actually never really covered Injured Cold at all. Yeah, I'm very okay. excited. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we well, got Well, that's great. And also, this I'm horrified of heights. And I, for that reason, I don't like bridges. So from that perspective, it'll also be scary. Oh, I yes. also hate bridges. I just get so nervous. Because, yeah. you know, all you do is yeah. turn the wheel one way, you're gone. And mm. then the idea of it collapsing is just so fucking scary. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Very, very um, Oh, speaking of scary, I'm going to be in Las Vegas on Sunday. Uh, so come and check me out on Wise Guys Comedy Club. This will be uh, July. I would think. Well, what is it? Twenty third or something? Yes, yeah, I something believe like so. Yeah, just look um, at the Sunday. The Sunday after so July. So if you're 20th. listening, if you're listening to this five years from now, I'm not there. <laughs> no, no, so that's no, why no, I always no. feel weird. Like plug, because he's lived forever. But it's good to do. It's good to yeah. plug for now because for then now. the audience can see a time capsule yeah. yes. of what our lives were like before everything went wrong. Yes. But the, then we have, uh, we're supposed to be doing a panel. You've already seen us if you're at Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con. We did a panel this morning. If I'm there, it means SAG allowed me to go. Mm -hmm. I'm currently pending trying to find out whether yeah, they're going to let me go. We, um, the only thing scabby on me is my knees after a fun weekend because we are not going to be breaking none of them picket lines. No, man. Hell we fuck those I, studio execs. I am not yeah. a fucking scab. We fuck the studio execs. I don't want to help them a one bit. Yep. So, fuck Universal. Please share the photo. That, unbelievable. Uh, Please share the photo of the trees that Universal Studios cut to deprive the strikers the of their shade. And by the way, those trees were pettiest. owned by the city of oh, Los yeah. Angeles. They, they were not. not owned by Ugh. Universal. They did that on purpose in order to break the strike. Fuck them. Fuck every single yep. one of them. Unions forever. Unions forever. Petty this is a shit. But so, and then with that energy, join us next week for our subathon. We're doing the for LPN TV presents. The Grindhouse. And yeah. what we're doing is a full-on yes. parody of all, everybody's favorite show from the mid-90s to the fucking um, the 2000s. It was 96 baby. to 2003. The Grind. We're going to be debuting some pilots of our new like Twitch shows. And Do we have oh, Daisy Fuentes? No, we don't. Her she life, has unanswered. Her life is going far too well to, to come she participate. Well, that's good. I'm actually happy she's doing but great. We are actually going to have a bunch of guests, special guests, new shows, and we are doing that twitch.tv slash last podcast yes. network from 10 to 10, July 29th. Come and check us out. It, it's free to do so, but we're looking for you sub because we're trying to build our own fucking shit over here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening, and thanks for listening to all the shows here on the last podcast network and our little serious shows that we do on Mondays and Tuesdays. Okay, hail yourselves. Hail Satan. Hail game. My ghost of legends. Hail me. No, please don't suck my menstrual blood. Mr. Mothman. I'll suck your menstrual blood. Mm, that's mine. That's my blood. <laughs> hey, Mothman, that's my blood. That's my blood. <laughs> this show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors, you can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com. <laughs>